Okay, thank you for inviting us to speak here. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about our journey towards becoming a global media company. Uh, a few years ago, Huffington Post was only a site in the US, and over the past four years, we've now expanded to 15 markets globally. Our international audiences are now over half of our total audience, and we cover around 70% of the world's GDP. The journey has been fun, it's been very fast, has not been easy, and we've also charted our own path over the past few years. So I'll talk a little bit about that story today. And just to give you a little bit of backstory, um, prior to my current role, I was also general manager of our international business, and in my current role, global expansion is a key priority for, for us as a company. Now, the Huffington Post over the past 10 years has dramatically grown to be a news and lifestyle site, but also one that's Pulitzer Prize winning, also one that has 200 million unique visitors, and one that covers uh, 15 markets. We were among the first to be prominent in politics, um, and we got a lot of recognition in the early years for that. We pioneered the industry-leading partner studio. In 2010, we launched our native advertising product, and our first campaigns were with Starwood and IBM. In 2012, we won our Pulitzer Prize, among the first uh, to do so in the digital news age. And we also began to expand our brand into lifestyle. So now our lifestyle audiences are actually larger than our politics audiences. This year, we are not slowing down. We have uh, dramatically grown our video investments with a 50-50 video ambition. That is 50% of our consumer experience being on video. We launched a new mobile redesign. You can check it out on your phones right now. Um, it, global features very prominently in the top left. You can see all the editions and all the countries that we're in. And we also launched a new app, a real-time news consumption app, and we also launched a new uh, HuffPost Highline, which has long-form investigative enterprise features. This might be out of range. There we go. This gives you a sense of our global presence today. Every market we go into, except for a couple, we've partnered with leading media companies, and a few of them are in this room today. And in the US, however, we still continue to uh, have a strong business. And this is us versus our competitors, a little recent Comscore ranking from a couple months ago. But while what Huffington Post looks like as a company has changed, our vision and our essence has stayed the same. We are here to inform, inspire, entertain, and empower our audiences. In Inform, we hope to create award-winning journalism that looks beyond the traditional paradigms of left and right. Within Inspire, we want to put a spotlight on what's working. We have an explicit reputation of the mainstream media paradigm of if, it's, if it bleeds, it leads. And instead, we think this is a false imbalance of the world. Uh, there are lots of positive stories out there, and we want to spend a lot of our attention on these positive stories as well. It's a layer that goes across all of our editorial priorities, from what's working in business, to health, to society, to culture, and something that really defines the HuffPost voice. We also unapologetically embrace both high and low. Um, we entertain our audiences, and we also empower our audiences. So we want to help people live the lives they, live the lives they want, not the, just the lives they settle for. So you'll see a lot of content on HuffPost that helps pe help people live better, eat better, sleep better, all towards a more enriching and fulfilling life. This gives you a sense of our scale. Uh, about 200 million UVs today um, on Comscore, about 900 staff, 100,000 bloggers around the world, 1,700 pieces of content published uh, every 24 hours, which just means a new piece of content every 58 seconds. And we have key thought leadership across main, these are three main pillars for us. So general news, lifestyle, and what's working. It's all bolstered by a tapestry of really interesting voices. The HuffPost contributor platform hosts a lot of influentials, ranging from uh, heads of state to heads of commerce, uh, in very you know, well-known innovators, but also people who just have interesting voices and uh, points of view to add to our platform. We've also enriched the experience with video, creating both newsroom video, HuffPost original productions, 
and a creators network. Uh, this year, uh, we've launched in our, our own MCN. So we've collected a lot of contributors from around the world, and we are giving them both scale and branding as part of the HuffPost network. The HuffPost Highline is also a new, richer way we can tell stories. It's every week features an in-depth piece um, that we spent many months on investigating. Uh, one of my favorite ones is actually um, one about the Muslims in America. So it basically showcased a much richer and varied tapestry of stories among Muslims in America, immigrant stories, stories of children, stories of senior citizens, stories of working class and a wealthy class. And it basically was a great representation of both uh, what we could do with our long form content, but also our what's working message. At the center of the HuffPost DNA, we have community engagement, our technology and content, and a global operation. In terms of community, uh, we've always been very strong on social. And if you know the News Whip ranking from last year, we were the most social publisher on Facebook as ranked by number of likes, shares, and comments on Facebook. And also, if you take a look at our, our, our content, it's powered by data as well. Um, this we can accelerate at a global level so that at real time we can look at anything from what's trending in Japan, capture it, and then bring it to Brazil at the same time. So we can systematically, you start thinking about this, we can systematically start making content go viral at a global level. This is one piece that we planted first in France and systematically carried to different countries and made it go viral in each of these countries. We're also able to do global news coverage. So earlier this year, there was the uh, attack on Charlie Hebdo in France. Our HuffPost France team led the charge, and they, within minutes, found footage um, of the shooting. Then, uh, the content that they created was then disseminated across all of HuffPost. Uh, our editorial director in France, Anne Sinclair, wrote a really powerful piece about uh, her relationship and her uh, history with one of the victims of the massacre. And then our editors-in-chief uh, around the world were able to go on broadcast, uh, especially our, uh, our editor-in-chief in France, Paul Ackerman, who was able to provide real-time commentary uh, from a local perspective. This we could then disseminate across all of our global editions as well. So this is something that you can start seeing, you can do really unique things when you have enough scale and the network itself is fully integrated. Going a little bit deeper into this path. If you rewind a few years ago, um, not very many American media companies were very global, uh, especially from a digital news perspective. About 20 years ago, uh, the US, and it wasn't necessary. About 20 years ago, the US had three-fifths three of the entire internet population. right? Um, but that's changed dramatically. Now it's only 10%. So if you want to reach another 90% of audiences out there, it is inevitable that you go global. The similar story applies to digital ad spend. Uh, there's $171 billion, two-thirds of which is outside the US. And today, 52% of our global audience comes from that outside the US. Uh, it's been a rapid journey, but it's also entailed a lot of transformations in the company and in, within each of our international editions. In each of the markets we go to, we seek to be a winner. Um, we're not just creating a simple licensing opportunity with a partner, but we want to create a fully-fledged digital operation that covers the suite of news, from general news to lifestyle, entertainment, um, and tech and innovation. It's getting increasingly crowded, but we've been able to rise to the top for a lot of these markets. Uh, as you may know, HuffPost Canada, since we're in Toronto, uh, is the number one most read site in Canada. Um, similarly, in a lot of other markets, HuffPost has become number top five or top 10 within a year or two of launching. But it's not easy, especially if you decide to do it the hard way, right? We have to consider a lot of things, from rich cultural nuances in how we deliver our content, from types of business development deals that we do that are catered to each market. Um, it's about how we scale our platform from a technologi technological perspective. It's understanding geopolitical 
connotations of choices that we make and the potential risks that we take if we go into certain markets. So all of these variables are things that we have to take into consideration if we want to launch a very successful global business. It hasn't been easy for a lot of other folks either. Um, a lot of other sites may be plagued by not having a truly local voice, and that, that gives them a cap on how much they can scale. Some of them do it alone. We don't do it alone because we feel like by partnering, we can do something greater and faster than if we were to go by ourselves. Some folks go into too many languages as they diversify too quickly, and each of them becomes too dispersed, and they have a very weak tie to the mothership. And in some cases, uh, they're, they have that dispersed site identity because they don't have enough control or they don't have enough consistency in the way the brand is represented. So these are all common ways, common paths that may happen. So it's not easy. Our model is to combine our expertise, combine HuffPost capabilities with the local strength, knowledge, and familiarity of a partner. Um, and together with this suite of partners here, um, we've been able to create a global operation with local strength. The outcome is that we can have a very distinctly local business. And we have local operations, local editorial brands, local editorial teams, partners, uh, voice with a global tech platform. Our HuffPost Canada team, which is just a couple miles away on Spadina Street, they have a very distinct voice for Canada. They use a lot of global content from the US, but at the same time, um, when a Canadian reads HuffPost Canada or can, watches a video or something, uh, it's, they can identify it with as well. In markets especially more distant culturally from the US, it's all the more important. HuffPost Japan, for example, we launched in May 2013. Prior to that launch, HuffPost had almost zero audience in Japan. And today, HuffPost is top five new site in overall in Japan. Um, that's happened in about two years because we had a team that was very good about finding the types of content that were both good uh, at a local level, but also capturable from a global level. We also have centers of excellence in the US that promulgate the best practices of HuffPost globally. It's not a one-time affair to go to a country and plant a flag and set it up and say you're done. Uh, it's a continuous process. So every single day, our teams in the US are working with our international editions, are working with our international teams to be the best they can be from a content perspective, from a tech perspective, analytics, operations, sales, video. We're always working with them in terms of best practices. I myself am on the phone and with emails with all of our internationals on a database, daily basis, on an hourly basis. Um, on any given day, I'll probably talk to five or 10 countries. So it's very much part of our lifeblood of our headquarters as well. And because we have that integration, because we have that cohesion, we can do a lot more collaboration uh, on content, on analytics, on video, whatever it may be. Uh, this is just one example for how we collaborated for our coverage of the Greek crisis. Um, and we can take themes from the US and push them out globally. Uh, this is on the, on the left-hand side. You'll see a, a Japanese incarnation of what's working. Uh, we can bring relevant cultural conversations to India as well, and we can target millennials around the world. Similarly, we have a blog platform that scales at a global level. So today we have over 100,000 uh, contributors on HuffPost, and we also take that model overseas. So in every one of our countries, we also have a network of contributors as well. These are influencers in, uh, in each of their markets. We can also do very interesting things from a commercial perspective. We have global advertising solutions for global brands, and there are a lot of brands out there that are hungry for publishers that can take them and activate campaigns at a global level. So today we have HuffPost Agora, which gives brands uh, a reach across 200 million UVs across uh, all of our markets. 13, uh, 13 out of our 15 markets are already ready to go. It's a one-stop shop and it's a single price point and provides unified reporting and it's a premium audience. So basically, it's as close as you can get to a plug and play solution for a global campaign. This is for display. We are building the capability today. Very soon, you'll be able to do the same thing at, for content marketing and native advertising. 
And finally, video is definitely the next chapter of where HuffPost is developing, and that is also true for what we're doing at a global level. Um, there are videos that we create or source at a local level, and there are also videos that are able to, that have universal feel, appeal. Uh, one of my favorite ones here is uh, a video that we, we used in the US. It was what it looks like when, uh, when deaf people truly hear for the first time. So they have these cochlear implants and they filmed a bunch of reactions. Um, that was something that was definitely very global uh, in its appeal, very universal in its appeal. And not only did this video go viral on HuffPost in the US, but it also went viral in all of our countries outside the US. We can do these things on a regular basis. Uh, we had a great video um, when about Trump saying China. You guys might have seen it on Facebook. It got a 20 million views or so. He says China, 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 China. And <laughs> we then used that video across, across the world. Subtitles weren't necessary. Um, we also had an interview with, uh, a, for example, an Australian uh, uh, MP. And that was also something that we could promulgate to all of our editions. So we can do a lot of interesting things when you have a global network. So finally, um, pardon me. So finally, tying it all together, right? We've had a really interesting journey. Um, it's allowed us to do a lot of really unique things at a global level. We have 200 million UVs, so we've had a lot of scale. But underneath that raw scale, there is a cohesion, an infrastructure, and a network that allows us to operate globally, like unlike anybody has, ha, is able to do. Um, it's something that we do very intentionally. It's something that we intend to grow. Um, we're actually here in Toronto to speak to potential partners for future countries for HuffPost to launch in. Um, and actually, myself and my colleague, Joshan, who's there in the audience, are here also to talk uh, to anybody who's interested during the conference. So, for us, it's been a great journey. Um, hopefully, this has been interesting for you as well. And uh, thanks for the time. Koda, thank you. Will you take a question? Of course, yeah. OK, we're near the drill by now. Um, the bouncy green cube of power should be floating around the room. Raise your hand, and it will come hurtling towards you at terrifying speed. Sir? It's really clever design, too. Hello? Great. Uh, hi, Josh Ritchie from Bloomberg. Great presentation. Thank you. What you guys have done um, and how you scale globally. Your centers of excellence are particularly interesting. Can you talk a little bit about just how you staff that up and what that looks like, especially in terms of post deal support and in various regions? Yeah, certainly. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, it's one thing to, to go into a country and to launch a business. And for the, the actual birthing process, it's hard enough, right? Um, afterward, you got to sort of take care of the baby. Um, and for us, that's where our center of excellence or where our global team uh, run, plays, plays a huge role. Uh, this team is based in New York. Um, it's a team that has specialties by domain. So for example, we have a lead on in global marketing, on global uh, products, uh, on global sales strategy. Um, and Joshan is the lead here on international business development. So, Having the center of excellence allows us to push proactively uh, initiatives at a global level. It also lets us to guide and have some guardrails for these guys who are in their early years. These are nascent businesses, so we want to make sure that you know they don't make the same mistakes that we make. Right? They can sidestep a lot of the pitfalls that we've seen before. And also, the thing is, we have we've done this 15 times, so there are a lot of best practices we've accumulated along the way. There are a lot of mistakes we can avoid. There are a lot of shortcuts we can take to the conclusion. So there's, a, there's almost like a compression of the timeline for each of these businesses. Um, we're able to compress a lot of these learnings as well as um, the, 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 the upside in terms of audience and, and revenue growth. We can figure out, for example, like one thing we've been doing recently actually uh, is we've done a couple of these upfront deals for, for launches. Um, when we launched HuffPost Japan, uh, Dentsu Aegis bought out 100% of our inventory uh, in, a, in a day. And so that basically made set the PL for a year. With that lesson, we then 
took that to other markets. Okay, so early in the planning process, how do we do that as well? So we were able to do that for HuffPost India. Group M, uh, also a launch partner for us there, uh, bought out 100% of our inventory on day one. So that's that. And then similarly, uh, Dentsu did it for HuffPost Australia when we launched two months ago. So these are the kind of things that we have, we see the vision of the future and we're able to take a shortcut there. Does that answer your question? Good. Um, I think we're done, so can I ask you please to thank Koda Wang. Thank okay. you.